Hello everybody. Uh, this video is a, a lot different than my normal videos because I normally try to keep a video all on one subject and uh, doing that has just about filled my phone up. Uh, memory wise there's just there's just not enough storage to make more than a 10 minute video right now and i've got something i'm working on that uh is going to require a lot more than that so this is i guess a video dump or whatever it's all 67 related stuff and the oldest one in it is like uh two years old so some of it's been seen before some of it hasn't been they were originally all going to be longer videos than this these little bits you're going to get i just didn't want i just didn't want to delete everything and never show it so that's what this is i hope you enjoy it let me know what you think and uh, here we go. This is a 69 Super Sport Chevelle hood that was on a car. They got hit by a semi-truck back in the 70s. I didn't have anything but a flat hood for my 67. And I wanted to make a uh, SS hood out of stuff that I had. I'm going to put the center of this hood on mine. And yeah, you know, there's going to be some welding, some beating, some bondoing and stuff. But it's not costing nothing but time. So... I hope you enjoy this. Please uh, hit that subscribe and like button. Yeah. We skipped forward in time a little bit. Front's tacked. Most of that side's tacked. Most of this side's about to be tacked. And then we're going medieval. It'll be fine. I think we done a pretty damn good job because inside, if it was just welded on up, it looked like it was stamped that way. For two bumbling idiots in a garage. <laughs> <laughs> it's not perfect. It doesn't really have to be perfect because that's what body filler is for. So. I ran into, we ran into issues with the peak not lining up with the 69s. This had already been cut, but in order for that to halfway line up, it had to change the angle to match this. And it's still going to make me have to fill it all the way back through here some to blend a sharp edge into a flat edge. I'm just tacking it every inch or so. Going to the middle of the photo pack. Heating it up. Now whacking it.
it needs more work as far as it needs a lot of wet sanding and stuff. This video is to attempt to answer a question that I had. It's it's kind of my belief that a 67 Super Sport uh, has a different steering box than a Malibu. Manual box, anyway. That they're different. And by different, this is the one that I've had on my car because at the time that I put that thing together, that's the only one I had. I marked it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Marks over here. That was lined up. One, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half turns. The point is, is the manual big block box is a slower ratio than the manual small block box. Hello, everybody. I don't know... Uh, when I'll post this up, but currently it's Halloween weekend. I'm here working on a door. And, uh, you know, might be drinking a little bit. Uh, I have pictures. I want to post the pictures right here. Okay, those pictures showed that that door had already been patched on the inside and on the outside, probably 30-something years ago. It was never painted or primed on those patches, especially on the inside. So it rusted back out. That's the back side of the door patch. I'm sure that was clean metal when that was put on there. So, uh, I redid the inside. I've redone the outside. I welded it all up. I fiberglassed over this and sanded it back down. And really, this is fine. I'll probably just prime this and leave it alone. It's That's not something that's normally going to be seen and, you know, Door jams, doors and stuff on the inside were not that nice when they were new. They had waves in them. They had uh, exposed seam sealer. They they weren't that nice. So this is, you know, should be fine. I'm going to flip the door over. Oh, and I also painted the inside of that this time. So I'm going to flip the door over and then show you what I'm doing to the outside. Okay. 
as you can see, I ground it down, cut out the rest, made a patch, welded it back in, ground that down, and now I'm going to fiberglass over it. I got the door out of here and now I have a trunk lid. Why am I going through all this to fix this one to make it to where I can use this one when I already had one? That's a pretty simple question to answer and if you can kind of just look underneath that trunk lid you can see why I would have a problem with that because I was wanting a stock appearing trunk when this is all said and done and uh, speed holes and stuff I can't do that so I was wanting to use this trunk lid it's got more rust than I thought it had I knew about that but it's got pinholes coming up everywhere when I'm taking a wire brush and running across them and I'm already redoing the car. I don't want to have to redo the trunk again anytime soon. So the only way I know to fix this problem is just to do this in the 70s. Dad and his friends put this car together in a junkyard with a stick welder and used steel. Uh... It's a little different now than it was when they raced it. When they raced it, that wasn't here. The top link originally went down on top, directly on top of that bracket on the rear end. So the top link was almost as much at an angle as that piece of flat bar is. So. When you hit a bump or anything, the back end of the car would go side to side. Because with a three link like this, it that needs to be flat. That top link needs to be flat because at right height, because if it's not, it'll go back and forth. So when the air shocks are aired up, that top that it's really what it is, is a cable tensioner, but the, the top bar or whatever is, is flat. So, kind of, kind of different. It's got uh, two sets of shocks on it. The air shocks actually do the dampening on the rear end, the way it is right now. And the cool shocks, cool overs, are drained. There's no oil in them. So, they're just free. Because they're mismatched. All this stuff was used. Originally, the battery was set back here. On what's left of it. But, I made that battery tray. We didn't have an alternator. And that ran a 1000 amp diesel battery. Heavy thing. So, uh... Yeah, there's your rear suspension setup. I know I was asked about that once before. Here's a uh, video of the drive shaft. That's a Gremlin or an AMC Pacer drive shaft. And I don't know if you can see it, but the drive shaft loop is a piece of log chain bolted to the frame. I also added the roll bar. When this car was raced, it uh, it had a roll bar, but it was really it was used rusty exhaust pipe, and it wasn't even welded in. It just kind of sat there. When they raced it, it had a single lap belt, and I put an old set of 
racing harnesses in it just to kind of feel better about it. But uh, in order for this car to actually be driven, it would have to have a set of spider gears put back in the pause attraction unit or uh, open carrier with welded spider gears or something like that. We needed the pause attraction unit parts for the 70 and my car. So, And the carrier that, I mentioned it, but the carrier that's in that 12 bolt is the one out of my car. That was taken out, uh, well, 1977, 78. So, now I'm going to go down in the building and put that 